hello. Unlike what my slide says, my name is Owen Gurton, not Ome. That's an unfortunate miscalculation there. Um, the, I would first like to share with everyone a quote. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. This really inspired me to really just research the topic I chose and just like start this project. Um, I would also like to share a definition of habits first by Benjamin Gardner and his team. It is that actions are that habits are actions that are automatically triggered in response to contextual clues, such as drinking coffee in the morning. Drinking coffee being the action and it being the morning being the contextual clue. I would also like to I would then like to transition into one of my research topics, which is uh, a study done on college students and how their habits affect them in and out of the classroom. They did a research, they did research on this by doing a study that involved a group of students that had the habit of eating popcorn in the movie theater and a group of students that did not have that habit. So they gave them fresh popcorn in the movie theater and get, showed them a movie and everyone ate the same amount of popcorn right there. You can see when it was fresh, one bag, one bag. But when they switched the popcorn to stale popcorn, the kids without the habit of eating popcorn stopped eating it almost instantly. They didn't like it. And the kids with the habit continued eating it, even though they stated they did not enjoy eating it. This really like put into me that habits really affect us, whether they are good for us or bad, like they're gonna affect us. This study also brought up how willpower and habits are correlated. Humans are lazy. It brings us up. Humans are lazy. It is bred into us. We will always look for the most simple way to gain excitement and enjoyment, such as scrolling through social media and things like that. We're not going to want to sit down, study for seven hours, even though it's going to be more beneficial to us in the long run. We are looking for the most simple way to pleasure. This is because back in the day, the person that went out and jogged for seven hours was the person that got caught by the lion. <laughs> this brings me to my essential question, how does implementing small lifestyle changes affect people in the I, for my project, I read a number of books, such as Leveling Up, The Science of Self-Learning, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Beings, and Getting Things Done. I learned many things from these books, such as habits in self-control, habits in um, learning new things, interpersonal skills, habits that skills to really gain information efficiently from books and other stuff like text. Okay, first I would like to talk about what I learned from the Getting Things Done book, the GTD system, as the book references it. So there are, the GTD system main like, goal is to capture your ideas, tasks, projects, just like anything that's flowing in your mind, and categorize them and sort them into something that's more easily like done so you can get things done when they need to be done. To do this, it captures, it has main points of this, is to capture your ideas, really organize them, get them into something like a notebook or like something online to like really organize it, clarify to really know what you're doing and why you need to do it. To organize, organize those things in the categories. To reflect to make sure everything stays up to date and so you're getting things done when they need to get done and to engage, to actually use the system. It's really helped me throughout this semester getting stuff done. Now I'd like to talk about the seven habits of highly effective people. From this, I learned how to be proactive to take responsibility for my life and really make sure I'm doing what I want to do and that I'm taking responsibility for the things I have and have not done. 
to begin with the end in mind, to really make sure that you're focused on what you want to do before you start, like what you want to end up with before you start something. So like say you want to like run a 5K. Before you start training, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to run that 5K. Then to put the first, put first things first, really like clarify what you need to get done first before you actually need to do anything. And then to set, to think first things first, and then to think win-win. Not everything has to be a competition in life. You don't have to have one person win for the other, for there to be a good outcome and have another person lose. Like everyone can have a good outcome in every situation. But life's really turned into competition. And then to synergize, to, oh no, to seek first to understand, then to be understood. Really communicate with people, listen actively, to understand what they're saying and then put your points in. Don't interrupt, like, really like understand what they're saying and then put your perspective on that situation. And then to synergize, collaborate effectively with people, be a team, be a team worker, really like connect with people. And then to sharpen the saw, which is to continuously improve your mind, spirit, and body so you can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to go out and do something else so you can be able to do what you want. I would now like to talk about a, an article I read, Good Habits, Bad Habits, by Anna M. Gabriel. So this really taught me, this article dives into the concept of the habits and what they go, what they talk about how they form the brain, how they are actions, they describe them as actions that are automatically like done over time. So like, like I said, the coffee, drinking coffee during the morning. Their habits are controlled by a specific portion of the brain, the basal ganglia, which was brought, which was figured out by this lady. The, everything in red up there, is the basal ganglia, and everything in blue is the substructures of the brain that are related to it. It also talks about how habits are difficult to change in art, uh, and how there is ongoing research into the neural me me mechanisms in habits, and how they're controlled, and how they function, so later on we can easily change by just targeting certain areas of the brain so we can get rid of bad habits and implement good. Overall, I learned the definition of habits, their triggers and effects on individuals, and I learned these things from the popcorn experiment, which taught me how habits correlate to willpower and how habits greatly influence actions, whether they be good or bad for the person. This brings me back to my opening quote that Habits. habits are too weak to be felt. The chains of habits are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. From Getting Things Done by David Allen and the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I learned how to prioritize goals and make small changes to achieve those goals, such as the GTD system and the Seven Habits in film. And overall, I learned that implementing small lifestyle changes can greatly affect people personally and professionally. And I just want to thank you all for listening to this. Uh, does anyone have any questions? What was the favorite book you read? Definitely.